in exactly 24 hours from this minute the biggest step Sonoma County has ever taken on climate change, the biggest single thing we've ever done will occur. And Chair Gorin, who's sitting right there in about the fifth row, it, who's chair of Sonoma Clean Power, is going to plug in a, a switch. It's admittedly a prop. <laughs> but the power will start flowing in Sonoma Clean Power. And with that change, over the next 12 months, just with the first 23,000 customers in our first group, we'll cut emissions in Sonoma County by 67,000 metric tons. 67,000 tons. And we're gonna do that at a very affordable price of not minus $6 million a year. We're saving $6 million a year while doing that. And this is incredibly exciting because it means that we've found one tool and we need a whole bunch of them. We need 100 more, but we found one tool to really effectively address one part of climate change. And this is starting to catch on. We're seeing this interest around California. Lancaster is getting a community choice program up and running. That's what this is called. How many people in this room attended public meetings and offered ideas, who sent in ideas, who worked for Sonoma Clean Power? I want to see hands. How many people were involved in this effort? This is more than a third of the people in this room had some involvement in bringing this to fruition. And I want to tell you about the story of how this happened. This, we've been growing this for 20 years. So 20 years ago, just about, the federal government issued an order to all the states that said, we want you to look at your power market. Half of that power market makes sense as a monopoly. You don't want two meters on your house. You don't want two sets of wires flowing through your neighborhood. You only need one. That's a natural monopoly. That makes sense. The other half, who's putting power into the grid? Who are those generators out there? Are we making that a competitive part of the market? Are we bringing the best that we can bring to that part of the market? And the federal government said, listen, to promote better competition, both for economic reasons and especially for environmental reasons, we want each of the states to take a hard look at this and think about making the generation side of power competitive. And so it, it takes a while, right? So in 2002, California started uh, passed a law that allowed community choice programs to occur. And what that meant was, for the first time, we had the right to form a locally run organization to contract for cleaner sources of power and to build cleaner sources of power. And so Marin jumped on board and back in 2010, they actually got Marin Clean Energy up and running. And so MCE Clean Energy, is there anyone here from MCE today? Yes, awesome. And uh, they were the pioneers. They really took all the slings and arrows and believe me, there were a lot. Uh, that same year, um, there was an attack, so the monopoly utility really wanted to defend its turf, and they uh, advanced a proposition statewide called Prop 16 that would have essentially made community choice programs impossible. It would have made it very, very difficult to start one, and it was defeated statewide, but really importantly, here in Sonoma County, we defeated it by 70% vote. And so we, yeah. <laughs> And, and ironically, the proposition, had it passed, would have required a two-thirds vote to form a community power system. So we just voted. And here in Sonoma County, we listened. And what was fabulous about this county is the county itself, the water agency, the climate protection campaign, the Santa Rosa Chamber of Commerce, the business community, the conservative community, the liberal community got together. This is a very rare occasion, and it is awesome. So let's celebrate this. And we did something, and we started researching this. We started doing a feasibility study. We had two and a half years of uh, working group meetings where a group of members of the cities and the electrical unions and uh, the Sierra Club and others got together in a room to hammer out what would this look like, how would it be formed, uh, how fast could we build new sources, how fast could we buy new sources, how fast could we make the shift could we make any new jobs? Could we do this affordably? All that transpired. And during that time, we ended up forming something. It was just the seed. We're talking about growing new opportunities. And that seed was this idea that we could take the program that Marin had started and make that incremental improvement that would turn it one step better 
that then Marin would then leapfrog us, and then we would leapfrog them. And then that would inspire Lancaster, and that would inspire Davis, and that would inspire Santa Cruz and the Central Coast, and that would inspire the North Coast, who's been calling, saying they want to join our program. And that would inspire each part of the, of the country, even, to start forming their own local power agencies. And the coolest part about this is, as a public agency, we get to, be, we get to celebrate the fact that PG&E is now starting to step up. PG&E is actually considering, for the first time, offering a 100% clean power option called their green option. They haven't put it on the table yet. That would never have happened without a strategic competitive threat from community power. And we get to celebrate that. Yeah. That's awesome. And they, they're going to offer that even outside of our county. They're going to offer that around their territory, which means we're making a difference, not just here in Sonoma County, but around uh, the whole state. So Sonoma Clean Power, in a nutshell, is offering power, cleaner power, at 30% lower emissions on the first day to Sonoma County. And all of the participating cities have eligible, uh, or customers are eligible in all those cities. The only cities that um, aren't participating, Healdsburg, because they have their own utility, they don't need us. And then three cities are still waiting to think about this because they wanted to see the rates and they wanted to make sure this was gonna be well run. So we're in one of them. We need Roner Park to come along and make that decision. And what it means is if Roner Park City Council doesn't vote, then nobody in Roner Park can participate. The city council actually controls whether or not you have the choice to buy cleaner power. That's also true of Petaluma and Cloverdale. So those three cities will be taking up this matter uh, over the next seven months. And if you have any interest in living in one of those cities or working in one of those cities, consider this your call to, uh, to action. Uh, also, uh, so Clean Start, our, our basic product at 30% lower emissions, is that product that's going to save Sonoma County $6 million and 67,000 tons of emissions in that first year, just with the first set of commercial customers. Residential customers start coming on board at the beginning of next year. We send out notices. This is actually so positive that the state, and in fact all the other states that are doing this, Ohio and Illinois, most of Illinois is on this kind of program, uh, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, a lot of states are doing this kind of thing. It's all shifting. So instead of the default power coming from the uh, for-profit organization, in our case pg and &E, the default service will come from the local community-run program. What that means is if you move into this area, your default power will be Sonoma Clean Power. If you choose to make no choice, if you choose to just sit back when those four notices come to your mailbox, then Sonoma Clean Power would be your provider. They call that an opt-out system. You can choose to opt out of Sonoma Clean Power and go back to PG&E. So it is up to you. But the value of this, the economic value, and particularly the environmental value is so high that the government basically made this the default provider. So I want to talk a little bit about what's happening with this program. Because what we're doing with this isn't just clean power. Sonoma Clean Power is a general purpose, locally run organization with a public board. We have public committees. Are there any other board or committee members here today? I think we've got Chair Gorman. Oh, yes, in the back, John Perry. Thank you for on the Ratepayer Advisory Committee. So we have two committees, a business operations committee that helps work on strategic planning and, and the business aspects, and a Ratepayer Advisory Committee. These are public committees. All the decisions about what we do are made here in Sonoma County. So when we set rates, when we decide what kind of sources we want to go after, when we decide what we want to build or how we want to spend our funding, uh, when we decide what our budget is, all those decisions are made here in Sonoma County. So we've localized the system. And what I want to talk about is what do we do next? So we have made incremental improvements now to net energy metering. That's the kind of thing where if you've got solar on your roof, if you're making extra, your meter spins backward. If you're using more, your meter spins forward. At the end of the year, that balance is accounted and we figure out how much you owe or how much credit you have. In the system today, under PG&E, you don't really get any value for extra credit. In the best case scenario, you get paid wholesale, which might be four or five cents a kilowatt hour. What we did is we made an improvement to that so that you get paid retail. And the difference for that, for any excess, is important for this reason. We have always sized solar to offset 
most, but certainly not all, of your load. Why did we do that? Because we didn't want you to waste buying solar power to cover all of your load just in case you conserved and used a little bit less. That's idiotic. We should absolutely be encouraging people to size solar to offset all of their load and if you accidentally conserve or maybe on purpose, you should be compensated for the excess that you produce. So that's one minor thing that we fixed. So now we get to size solar in the right way. We're looking for other opportunities like that. So with feed-in tariff solar, this is for a wholesale provider. If somebody's got like a big warehouse um, and they don't have a lot of load, they can put solar on that roof and sell it into our system. We'll be the buyer. We'll sell it to you as a customer. And we get to help facilitate that transaction because now there's a market for your solar power. We're doing that as well. And that'll be up and running likely by July, August, probably at the latest as a system for being able to participate in the market in a way that you haven't been previously. I also want to tell you about something that is even more exciting. So we have Clean Start, that 30% lower emissions, but that's, that's, a, that's a competitively priced product. It was designed to get the maximum participation. There's something else that we get to do, though. Uh, when we were forming this, people said, well, we want something better. We want, we don't want emissions. You know, we want to have, we want to encourage local construction of renewables. We want to encourage uh, much better than just a little bit. And so we're offering evergreen service, evergreen being 100% renewable and entirely produced inside Sonoma County. This is the first time this has ever been offered in California, anything like it. It is totally local. 100% renewable, zero emissions, and we start with the Calpine geothermal field at the north end of the county. It's a baseload resource that is killer. When you flush your toilet in Santa Rosa, okay, bear with me, <laughs> flush your toilet in Santa Rosa, it goes to a treatment plant, gets treated, gets pumped up the hill, down into a dormant volcano, okay, this is volcano power, it heats up, it turns into steam, the steam expands, the, spe the expanding steam spins a turbine, the turbine makes electricity day and night when the sun's not shining, when the wind's not blowing, it's a baseload resource. It's the biggest facility of its kind in the world. We have an amazing resource in our backyard and it's produced by volcano toilet power. <laughs> it, is an, it is a really wonderful resource in terms of creative, sustainable opportunities. We get to use more of that, and we will. And so Evergreen starts by using that baseload resource. You have to start with some kind of baseload. We want to layer on top of that solar power because solar is an excellent resource that we know how to permit in Sonoma County. We know how to build more of. We know how to use solar power. We've got 63 megawatts installed already here in Sonoma County. Brad's installed two of them, one on that building and one on the building over there. Um, and we're, so that's an incredibly good start. We could add easily 50 to 100 more megawatts in Sonoma County and not be producing too much. Our load would still be looking really good in terms of production. So Evergreen. Evergreen is exciting enough that we're making it available even before customers would ordinarily be eligible for Sonoma Clean Power. So I would encourage you to think about this. Now, it's not, not the same price as Clean Start. We have to pay extra for local power. And so that extra is, a, is exactly three and a half cents a kilowatt hour. And that goes on top of the other charges. And what that amounts to for a typical home is somewhere between about 15 and 20 bucks a month on, on average, extra charges for a residence. A um, little bit less for a condo and an apartment. A uh, little bit more if you've got a big hot tub or a pool. And, but what it means is you're redirecting your money to a local resource. You're voting for more local renewable power and you're sending a signal to us and to the market that we want to have your input. We want to build more local renewable resources. We want to take control of that market. Zero emissions. Anybody in this room can sign up for it today. And if you did, the power would start flowing from totally clean sources tomorrow morning at 8.45 a.m. when we plug that plug in. And uh, I would really encourage you to think about that. The way you do it is to get onto sonomacleanpower.org, 
You type in, you need a PG&E bill. There's 10 numbers in the upper right hand corner, your account number, and you type that account number in and your zip code and away you go. You can actually sign up for Evergreen by doing that. If you wanted to opt out and be with PG&E, why would you do that? You would do the same process and choose opt out, but that's the process. I wanna talk about where we go further. So we talked about net metering, about feed and tariff solar, and about these kind of programs like Evergreen. What do we do next? We get to decide. This is our program. The funds flow back into Sonoma County. They're under local control, so we get to decide that. So I wanna point out Richard Sachin over here in the third row here uh, kicked off a killer idea at the um, electric, vehicle, electric Auto Association uh, meeting that we were speaking at. He said, well, let's develop a network of evergreen electric charging stations for cars. And he's actually already working on this. He's trying to put this together. We had another folk uh, come in and say, I want to develop a community solar program based on donations so that charities benefit and they get the income stream off of locally installed solar. Can we do that? We're looking into that and trying to figure out how do we do that from a tax perspective so that we can capture some of those tax credits. We're looking at these kinds of ideas because we need your input. We need creative ideas like that. Here's a killer one, okay? An electric car switches from a, a gas fuel to an electric fuel. It increases our load, so it increases our revenues, but it decreases emissions. So that increase in revenues gives us more money that we can fund back into programs. So shifting to electric cars is kind of a win-win. What if you could finance the purchase of an electric car for somebody who didn't have great credit, and you could guarantee that at their apartment complex, you could install a charging uh, station? One of the biggest problems with electric cars is no infrastructure at your home environment in multifamily. That would be interesting, but what if you could do it on your power bill? What if you could finance the purchase of an electric car on your power bill? Nobody's ever tried that before. We get to think like that. I don't know if it's legal, but let's find out. <laughs> so I actually want to take just a few minutes right now, because I got the 10 minute card already a minute ago, but I want to take a few minutes right now to generate some ideas in this room. I want, I want some hands up. I want to hear from you about ideas. And then I want to encourage anyone who didn't speak to drop a note in our booth in the back. We've got a jar for further ideas. We are collecting these, we are analyzing them, we're trying to figure out what we can figure out how to proceed with, and I want some ideas today. So who's got an idea of what we should do next? Yes, sir. Better rebates for LED and other types of lighting, and Texas is beating us, that's, that's wow. shameful. All right, there was somebody over here, yes, sir. So we're going to reduce methane from like landfills. So we're going to take Nick's idea of reducing food waste going into landfills. Already a good idea. We're going to go further. We're going to capture the methane, produce some power with it, turn it into CO2, much lower greenhouse gas emissions, rock an idea. I'm going to repeat part of that because it's probably already here in the back. So a conference that brings together private and public uh, partners to figure out how to build local renewable resources affordably. That affordably is one of the key things. One of the hardest things that we have to figure out is what to do when the rules on net metering change. And those rules are probably gonna change in 2017. And when that happens, if the only option we have is selling from our rooftops at wholesale prices, it's gonna put a real crimp in the renewable market. And so we need to figure out how to get together as a community, how to figure out how to solve that problem so we don't hurt our solar industry, so we don't slow down in addressing climate change, and this kind of conference idea, I think, is a, is a terrific one. A couple more. In the back. Yes. So there's a call for education about power usage, and I want to I wanna take that as a segue, because power usage, the, the, the least expensive way to have a positive impact on the climate through power is not by producing new power. It's not by building new solar. It's not even by installing efficient lights. It's by behaving differently. It's that conservation behavior. Uh, it doesn't require any technology. It doesn't require any investment. It requires a behavior shift. And that's also one of the hardest things for governments and big companies to figure out how to address. This is where you come in. This is where our network of people come in. This is where Nick's idea of crowdsourcing comes in. It's where educating school kids to educate their parents about recycling that happened in the 70s actually worked. It did take 20 years, but we got there. 
And I think um, conservation has to be one of these aspects that we do focus and don't shy away from. So I think that educational aspect is, um, is one of the things that we want to focus on. And just to leave you with an idea, in the UK, I was working on a project that put the power meters for the apartment building next to the mailboxes with the unit numbers on it. That's an interesting, provocative idea. Kind of un-American. <laughs> but information is useful. So thank you. Sign up for Evergreen if you want to vote for Sonoma Clean Power and vote for local resources and vote for zero carbon. Thank you so much.